AI understands a few basic facial expressions. But for more complex ideas, it is harder to get good results. Just like with the angle and perspective of the face, the expression itself with its subtleties, and the eye positioning or where the characters are looking at. As a first step, I highly recommend the use of LoRas for this. Which is why I assembled a collection of over 200 facial expression LoRas that you can download for free in the link in the description. Of course, most of these LoRas aren't mine, so massive thanks to all the creators that post their trainings to help the community. I did, however, generate a visual representation of what every LoRa can do, as well as preparated the metadata so that you have the necessary information to properly use each and every LoRa, plus leaving them ready to click and use. I will be using this pack throughout the video, but you can use your own if you want. And that being said, let's move on to the first issue. While the positioning of the face is almost impossible to get right with just prompting, the the solution to it is fairly easy, just use ControlNet. But there is a bit of a trick to it. Normal angles like this, where you can see most of the face, are easy to get right with just a regular ControlNet reference. But I still need to talk about how to get more uncommon angles like these ones, where AI gets a bit confused. As you can see, in extreme positions, the basic rig isn't enough to make AI understand what we want. You could try to help it giving some context with a death map, for example, and this will get you okay results sometimes. But the more optimal way is to use the face open pose model. This will get you good results most of the time, at least when it comes to the angle of the face. Personally, I use these tools depending on what I need. One being just posing myself and using my webcam. Two, I have an open pose rig that does have a face. And three, a general 3D model that also has a face. I also use one other option. I export poses from Pose My Art. Then I iterate until I get an image that I like, not really paying attention to the face itself for now. Once I'm satisfied with the pose and the character, I start posing the face. For this, you can use any method mentioned before, or do as I'm doing right now. Go to referenceangle.com. Here you have this floating head that you can move around and pose however you like. From this website, you could actually try to find faces of people in that position. But most of the time, I just screenshot the head itself. Now bring that screenshot or image into ControlNet and use the DW Open Pose Full preprocessor. This is the best preprocessor by far and should get the pose right almost every time. If it doesn't, you could either retouch the pose manually, export it in another way, or maybe even just use LineArt instead of Open Pose. We will download the preprocessed image and use an editing software to place the face where it should be, like so. Fill the rest of the image with black and export this new ControlNet reference. I send the original image to InPainting and import the reference to ControlNet. If everything is right, using one denoising strength and a normal prompt should be enough to get a properly positioned face. You can use only masked if you feel like you don't have enough resolution, but remember to give AI enough context using a high padding pixels number. When it comes to weird perspectives and lens distortion, I haven't found much aside from the usual ways. Regular prompting can work if you know the name of the camera angle and the lens you are looking for. You could also train and use LoRa's for that specific perspective, like this Going Insane one by Fallen in Curcio in CBDI, and also exporting post depth maps and open post maps directly from sites like Post My Art, as I'm doing here, giving me these results. Now that we know how to position the face in any angle, it's time for the actual topic of this video, uncommon facial expressions. Common ones you can mostly get by prompting, or at the very least, it will be easy to find a LoRa made to get them, cause of course a Hegao has been trained like 3000 times. I've divided these expressions in three different groups, according to the method you use to get them. The last one being the most time consuming, but also the best one. Starting with facial expressions that can be achieved by mixing multiple LoRa's directly with prompting. For example, this image, with it being the easiest combination possible. It's a mix between only two LoRa's and two that affect different parts of the face. Faceless blush that affects the eyes and talk mouth eye that is focused on the mouth. Just prompting with both LoRa's active is enough to achieve the result we wanted, but I want the same clenched teeth effect but with a bit more force to it. For this I'll use the Excurt Expressions LoRa, only issue being that this LoRa actually affects the rest of the face too. If I hit generate, you will see that the eyes are now in conflict with the other LoRa. We don't want any eyes, but the Excurt Expression LoRa is adding them. Adding eyes in the negative prompt is helping, but not enough. So let's adjust the weights a bit. First we will move clenched teeth, the important part, in front of the prompt. 
Then we will lower the weight of the LoRa and its main trigger word, so that the effect lowers on the things that aren't the clenched teeth part. We will also use a higher weight on the negative ice prompt. And now we're getting somewhere. What if I wanted to add another LoRa to this? Let's see. I have changed the eyes to be a looking disgusted LoRa. This affects the whole face, so we will have to solve the conflicting parts first. In this case, the main issue is that the two LoRa's are blowing up the image. Don't be afraid to lower its weights or activate high res fix. I will use 0.3 for the disgusted LoRa and 0.6 for the scared one. And let's see what happens when I add the next LoRa to it. I will add one of my own LoRa's, looking left. And it isn't working because there is too much influence from the other two. I will just play with the weights of the LoRa's until I get what I want, like so. Problem is that as I use higher values and more LoRa's, the prompt gets lost. The simple prompt here was blonde made outfit, and the outfit is not here anymore. If now I were to add another extra LoRa, it would get even worse. Also, keep in mind that there are LoRa's with stronger bleedings than others and that are less flexible. Let's look at some easy tricks to avoid this so that you can combine LoRa's properly. First, you may have seen that I've been using ControlNet open pose this whole time. This is because most LoRa's have some bleeding that affects the pose. And having control net helps me getting the pose to stay in one place. But this can have some bleeding too, which is why I use it with lowered weights and with an ending step of 50%. Second, if the main issue you are having is that some part of the prompt, other than the face, is getting lost to bleeding, like the maid outfit in this case, you can prompt regularly first and then change the facial expression with after detailer to make the LoRa's only affect the face. For example, here I just prompt for the overall image and then, with after detailer, I get the expression I was looking for. Sometimes you can try to get the same prompt in after detailer and text to image, but using low weights in the main prompt to avoid a hard bleeding while maintaining the main basic shapes, and then use higher weights on the after detailer one. This makes it so you can lower the denoising strength in case the face is not generating properly. If we wanted to do something like this for our example here, we could actually try to use the after detailer for just the eyes. I will leave the eye detection model in the description. But the success rate on this is pretty low, so I wouldn't use it for now. And just as a fast tip, if you have more than one character with different expressions, go to the after detailer settings and activate left to right, and then prompt for the expression on the left. Add in between a squared brackets S E P and prompt for the next one on the right. This will invent my two different expressions in order, from left to right, obviously. There will be some cases where you can't use after the tailor or don't want to for whatever reason. Like here, where the hand gets completely cut off when I use it. In cases like this, you could use composable LoRa to make use of prompt editing to combine the expressions. You can use it as a way to mitigate the LoRa's bleeding onto the rest of the image too. For example, here we have the original results for this seat with no LoRa's at all. If we were to add those LoRa's without using composable LoRa, the image becomes a close-up and we lose most of our background. So instead, I will add the LoRa's after the main image has been decided, by typing this here. This means that faceless will become a part of the prompt at step 14, it being the first because it is the most important one and has to erase the eyes before it's too late, and Hawawa will enter later at step 18. With this, the image maintains a lot more of what it originally was, but with the expressions we wanted. Even if some parts have been lost, the composition is fairly similar. With that said, another tip I should give you is to try stuff with different checkpoints. Here I'm using any LoRa by Lycon, because it is very good when trying to combine LoRa's like this. But different models will be better for different things. Ok, the second type of expression is very fast to explain. It's meme or ultra exaggerated facial expressions. You pretty much need to either train a LoRa on them, like here, and this is probably the best way to do it if you are going to reuse this expression a few times, or you could also try with inpainting or combining different control line models like line art, open pose and instruct to image, but it can be very hard depending on the expression you want. Finally, onto the best method to achieve good facial expressions and with the most control I've found. And here we can use an extremely powerful type of LoRa at its full potential in painting and manual retouching. The idea is fairly simple, generate a base image and then change each part individually until satisfied. This way we can combine multiple LoRa's without worrying about one affecting the other, with the only setback of having to do it one by one manually. Let's go over how to get an expression similar to this one. I'll in paint this image right here. We can see the slight arcing of the interior part of the eyebrows. 
It is overall a relaxed expression, but with some tears in the eyes and a tight shutting of the mouth. Knowing this, let's look for loras and expressions that have those characteristics. Starting with sadness, which usually makes the interior of the eyebrows arch upwards. I will use this Laura. You see that I added as info from 0 to 3. This is because it is an slider Laura, and it allows us for much more control than a regular Laura. This can be pretty important, so I will explain it with a bit more detail after this example. For now, let's use it as it comes. I will first mask the area I want this Laura to affect, just the eyebrows and forehead. As you can see, the effect is a bit too rough, so let's lower the Laura's weight to 1 and try again. You can of course try with different seeds to see if you get a different result. I will use a higher denoising strength here, as I want the eyebrows to be able to move freely. If this change results in too many wrinkles, like in this example, we can fix it with painting again. For this, try using the method fill with a low denoising strength like 0.35 or so. This has taken them out and we have this. So let's move to the eyes. Here I don't really care about much, just that there are some tears on them and a bit of redness. For this, I will use this Tears Laura. Also, take out my negative prompt and add Tears, Red, Irritated to the main prompt. And something important, I already like the main shape the eyes have, so I will use a very small denoising strength, less than 0.3 in this case. Now I iterate until I find a combination of Laura and prompt weights that I like, this one. And don't worry if it's a bit too red on the cheeks, fix it like we did with the wrinkles. It's time for the hardest part of the expression, the mouth. And it is this hard because I found a very small amount of loras that are focused on the mouth, and none that helped with tightened lips. So I will use an anime Laura instead. Let's go to SD 1.5 now. I will use the epic realism model. Here we will actually use a Laura that works better with anime. But for this example, I found it to be quite good. Moral of the story, don't be afraid to use different models and try stuff out. I will use the wide mouth Laura with negative 1 weight and the prompt you see. Now we inpaint the lips and you will see that it kind of tries to give us a tightly closed lips effect. We would like the mouth to be wider and a bit more tight though. And that will be very hard to get directly. So the next trick is... Yeah, it's Photoshop. Here we actually have the liquefied filter. It has a facial feature that can help with minor tweakings like this, but I won't be focusing on it too much because some people won't have it. Also, right now it ain't super useful. So I will just use my finger and drag it on his face to make him upset. And don't worry if it doesn't look great for now. We import this back into Stable Diffusion. Now lower the denoising strength as we have a better shape than we did before. Generate again. This time it's giving us way better looking images. If you still don't like the result, you can go back to Photoshop once more and repeat the process until satisfied. If by the end of the inpainting process you have some ugly color variations, like here in this other example I made, you can go to image to image and generate with a denoising strength of like 0.2 or so. This should maintain the details of the image while erasing these imperfections. And now that you're seeing this, there are some extreme expressions like this one where everything is pressed up that are very hard to get. You'd probably end faster just training a lot for them. But if you find a way to create this, please share it down in the comments below. Thank you. Now, before moving into the very last part of the video, let's talk about this. This is created with a slider Laura I trained. It can work with regular prompting, but I feel like it's better within painting. This is a type of Laura that assigns a different meaning to each value you input as a weight, working always at 100% strength, instead of having only one meaning and determining its strength by the weight you input, like a regular Laura does. As you can imagine, having these types of Lauras allows for absolute control, but I haven't found a way to train everything I would want. Next video will be about this topic, so I will try my best. Hopefully there is a way, and we can train slider for stuff like intensity, like this. Or even eye movement, like this. And speaking of eye movement, time to see how to make your characters look the correct way. You probably have experienced the pain of trying to make a character look a certain way and AI just wanting to make eye contact with you. And I don't blame it, you do be looking hella cute. But sometimes we just want space. I have already introduced to you the three loras I made to avoid the looking at viewer effect. Looking left, right and down. It can be helpful situationally, but it's not true control. So, aside from inpainting with Loras and hoping for the best, what else can we do if we want a very specific eye position? 
For example, in this image we would like the character in the left to look straight into the other character, while the second one would be adverting eye contact, looking down to the left. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is change his eyes. I want some normal eyes, please. Thank you. Now, we got lucky, and I could use this image here, where the eye is already looking in a nice direction. But let's use this image instead. And here comes the part of the video where I tell you to do stuff manually. Let's be honest, this is the best way to have full control. We have some approaches though. The first one, and the most obvious, is to go into Photoshop and either move the iris around or just paint a new one. Another option is to create a control net reference. We do this by tracing the contour of the eye, and then drawing where we think the iris should go. Like so. Now add a white background and export. In your Inpainting tab, go to Control Net and click the Upload Independent Control Image checkbox. Import your new Control Net reference and select Line Art. I personally like using a weight of 2, with Control Net is more important, but that depends on you, and at the noising strength of 0.5. Of course, these are situational and might change for you. Here you are pretty much done. Just select the result you like the most. If you wanted to add some extra details to the eyes, you can inpaint the result again with a very small denoising strength like 0.28. And yes, in this case he is looking at her forehead, but that's my fault for drawing the eye position in like 2 minutes without paying attention. And for her, I will use the last method and probably my favorite one, inpaint sketch. I don't know why the f I did that, okay. Um, this is a fairly straightforward approach. You just paint the new position directly in Stable Diffusion, without caring much about the result itself, since Stable Diffusion will correct it for you. First, we erase the current iris. Next, paint the new one as a rough sketch with a plain color. Now paint the pupil. And let's touch the settings for this to work. First, activate Control Net Tile. I will use a 0.7 strength and 0.7 ending step. Play with the ending step if you feel like the result is changing either too much or too little. Then I use a denoising strength of 1. Of course, you can go lower, but again, there's no need. And finally, but very important, lower the mask blur to 1. Now hit generate. As you can see, some results are better than others, but just play with the parameters until you are satisfied. The important thing is that the eye is positioned exactly where I wanted it, and where I drew it. I really hope this video helps you create what you needed, and make sure to join our Discord server if you have any doubts or just want to share some stuff. Also, you will see that I now have a coffee page. I created it mainly to have a place where I can post the resources I offer in my videos. Thank you all for watching, see ya!